Welcome to the Ashan Breakfast Call session. Uh, today we have Wai Ling Chong with us talking about education. Uh, she is one of the founder behind Learning Beyond Schooling. So, Wai Ling, hi. 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 Uh, tell us a little about Learning Beyond Schooling. Well, it is just a name we give ourselves mm -hmm. to get parents and educators to think out of the box where learning can go beyond the normal, standardized kind of schooling. So mm. it is a, it's a call for a mind shift in mm. the way we educate our young. Mm. So if I read it correctly, on your Facebook page, you talk about how learning beyond schooling is we are unschoolers. Uh, we aim to encourage, develop, and evolve alternative approach to education and learning. So with the children taking uh, the center stage as learner. Yeah, is that, what, what is unschooling? Well, um, basically, unschooling um, in, in the States, United States, right. um, uh, is, is used to describe um, a kind of home education. Right. Um, that is more um, giving more freedom for the children to discover their own interests and passions, mm -hmm. going according to their pace. Mm -hmm. So it's not even uh, homeschooling anymore, it's unschooling. Yeah, it's going a little bit beyond the, the traditional concept of homeschooling, where co homeschooling um, traditionally means um, children stay at home and the parents are teaching the children. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, right. It's um, what is uh, different is the main difference between unschooling and homeschooling is um, unschooling is more uh, unstructured, right? Um, so it doesn't uh, normally depend on a curriculum, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where um, this uh, whole uh, learning is more self-directed right. and interest-driven. Right. But what is it really about uh, the Asian education system that makes you pursue alternative education? Uh, basically, it's the system of rote learning and uh, examination-centered uh, learning, Okay. Okay. which is very linear and very narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't um, promote creativity mm -hmm. um, or thinking out of the box, divergent thinking. Um, so, uh, from the start, because we are ourselves a product of the schooling system, the, the difference is, it was 30 years ago, whereby, um, uh, what do you call it, we, the, the stress was still on uh, educating the whole, whole person, oh, not okay. so much on um, exams. But right. over the past 10, 20 years, somehow it's become very skewed and narrowing to standardized testing. Because during our time, our school still had a lot of extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. um, those who are in the creative arts, there's lots of dancing, singing, concert, choir, band, you know, you name it. There's so many interest clubs around. Isn't but it the that, same? No. It's not. Now, the, the, those are like, uh, you spend a little time with that, but much more, um, the exam is a very big thing. But before, the exam wasn't that big. Mm. We had exams, yes, but we still had a lot of fun. Mm. So what is your counter-proposal then, your, your education philosophy? Well, we need to um, get back to the roots. And have parents reclaim their family's education. Mm -hmm. Okay, we cannot totally outsource education right. to the schools or uh, tuition or learning centers. Um, to do that, we will lose a last large part of the education process, which is um, transferring the important values mm -hmm. of family values, mm -hmm. of uh, spiritual values, 
um, you know, being civic minded, being compassionate, all these you need to have parents to child and also the community, mm. which is in the urban scenario. Um, if we are losing that because we are losing the um, nuclear family setting. Um, we are losing the community um, setting. So, um, what I'm try- we are trying to do is to reclaim all this and try to practice all this and have cho- uh, make a conscious choice to live a lifestyle that promotes family closeness, mm-hmm. um, a genuine care for one another, mm-hmm. and to promote um, learning in a fresh, with a fresh mind. <laughs> But what do you think is the impact of the traditional education system? Uh, whether is it on the children itself or on society? Um, the impact I think we we are seeing now in society is people care less. Mm-hmm. Um, people just want to chase after their own personal or selfish goals. Mm-hmm. Um, majority of the those who go for high learning or, you know, they they just want to... Uh, it, it's, it's like it going with the, the flow that is to get a good, uh, good results so that they can go to a good college, so they get a good job, so they get... You can buy a house, a car, and whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it's, it's really, really um, not complete. So I guess uh, it has also an impact uh, of making people more lonely or detached uh, from a lot of uh, yeah from uh, yes from the you know the the social point of view you have um, this kind of uh, syndromes and tendencies mm. and people don't tend not to think for themselves because they have lost the ability to trust their own instincts and to tr- uh, go with how they feel mm. okay because people dare not do that you just need to follow right. but so regarding uh, your approach then how do children actually learn best and how how does your approach um, if you have any measure uh, like observable impact on the children i think children before you go into learning you have to go into interpersonal relationship, how parent-child uh, relationship is, mm-hmm. um, how the child feels about himself or herself, okay. uh, how the parent talks to the child. So it's like that respect for the child, number one, and the um, understanding of how children learn and uh, be motivated. Okay, and what uh, parents and educators can do is to support that kind of learning mm-hmm. and um, to help um, when it's needed. But give them lots of space mm-hmm. to explore, to question, to experiment, to be curious about the world, and even to make mistakes. Because a lot of people are very, very afraid to make mistakes because they, they associate that with failure. But right. success doesn't come without failures. So children need to learn to make small, small mistakes. Otherwise, when they're adults, <laughs> um, they're, not, they're not going to want to uh, take any risk, you know. And I've seen a lot of people who have that. They have this fear to make decisions for themselves, even simple decisions, because they have this big fear that they might make the wrong choice. But how we um, nurture our children is we tell them, you make a choice. And sometimes the choice, you know, may not be quite uh, suitable. But if you don't make, you wouldn't know. So (laughs) that is called the education process of a child. But I believe that... um 
uh, th- this is also part of the counter argument against uh, such unschooling or homeschooling communities that uh, they are afraid that the child might not succeed uh, t- it, it, whether is it in life, you know, getting a job and whatnot, uh, why getting the higher education. Yeah, we, we must, that's why I emphasize from the beginning is a mind shift. Okay. And if you um, read about uh, all these future thinking researchers, mm-hmm. and they're all talking that you need to change this education because this is an industrial based education. Mm. Okay, it's from another era. We have, we are already in the midst of the 21st century, yet mm. we are groping and, you know, uh, holding on to the straws of the industrial era education. Mm. So, um, but there are many, many um, um, pockets of movement all over the world where um, those who are really you know passionate about education uh just one example is the ken robinson right. um who has been giving a lot of talks and even written two books about uh mm-hmm. the element and finding your element mm-hmm. okay we all agree that the education system that we have inherited is no longer viable for the present generation and the future generation we all agree nobody disagrees but the big question is, how are we going to change it? Mm. So, uh, so uh, w- have you ever had um, any measurable um, impact or, or just you know observations from how um, this kind of a uh, different alternative approach to education? Uh, what what does it cost to the to the children? Uh, well, the very very um, obvious. Uh, if you call measurable, mm-hmm. if you can call it, um, is that children who are not forced into a system or forced to learn in a way that does not um, complement their own uh, learning styles or interests, um, the children will naturally have a very good um, self-esteem and they know what they want and they know what they don't want. They are not afraid to make a decision about the choices uh, in life. And um, they are focused about what they want to do. Okay. So um, because we don't try to cram so many things into their daily lives, okay, it is not a natural thing to be having the child wake up at an unearthly hour Mm -hmm. um, to go to a place crammed with, you know, so many hundreds of children Mm -hmm. to learn a certain subject within a certain time. Mm -hmm. So these are all questionable, uh, questionable uh, approach Mm -hmm. now in today's uh, day and time. So... Mm -hmm. What we are encouraging uh, people to think in a you know deeper into what education means and to make a conscious choice for the family. Mm-hmm. And when each family does this, mm-hmm. and this will grow into a movement where it will be significant. Right. Yeah. But what is the state of such movements, uh, whether it's in Malaysia and Southeast Asian countries? Um, it, it doesn't matter, but it is, it is definitely happening. Growing, you, know? you would say? Yeah, it is growing. Right. It is happening. Uh, people are doing it. Parents are um, reclaiming their families right. by uh, taking education into their own hands. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about um, the knowledge economy, and talk about um, uh, what do you call it, virtual learning, and all these. These are all, of course, is growing. Of course, it's also still in the infancy stage. But mm-hmm. the only the the one thing is for sure is that knowledge is in their fingertips. So there is no um, not a matter of not being able to get 
information or data, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it seems like though um, in a lot of uh, Southeast Asian countries, the state are not taking it very well. Or, or so, how what, what is the proposal on how uh, how to advocate this further? When in certain countries, uh, it might even be illegal. Yeah. No, if we we try if we try to get every single person to do the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, it is um, not it's not viable and it's not positive, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying that everyone should do this. I'm saying that there are parents who are ready for this. There are children who need this kind of learning. We need to provide them with that. Because not um, every child today um, really take to the kind of schooling that we have now. But I'm not saying that everyone must do this or everyone must do that. So you need this diversity and you need to, we all need to just think about how to make learning uh, effective. Um, and the most important is that the child is happy learning. Mm -hmm. The happiness of the child. That I think nobody measures that. Mm. Yeah, I know that uh, you guys might also have something against measuring things as well, <laughs> which is what is traditionally practiced in education system. Uh, of course, in society, you know, we, we do need. But what I'm saying is... Um, if you have a situation where you can create an alternative, you know, why not try it out? Mm. So how can people find out more or support you or join you? How can the families join uh, you guys? Well, we don't really um, <laughs> want people to join anything. Just just uh, come together. Rethink. Just just okay. start to rethink this whole lifestyle, you know, this whole um, learning, okay, and uh, think about how it can impact your child, mm -hmm. okay, so if you can, we need more um, people to think outside the system, because we cannot, I, I believe we cannot fix a broken system, but we can build new ones or, you know, break it up into small pockets and, you know, we need a lot of experimentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we, we cannot fear failure. If, if we um, do not try or do not experiment and do not make mistakes and then learn from them, then it will never grow. Mm -hmm. right? So like 10 years ago when we talked about home education, it was... Uh, there, the interest was there, but today when you talk about home education, the interest is like many more, much more. Mm. Okay, so ten years ago we talk and it's like a small room, maybe a few families. You know, now when something like this is uh, being held, like packed, you know, mm. about hundred people will come. I you think know. it also shows signs that uh, the education system is failing um, a lot of people, maybe. It, it shows that parents are more open mm -hmm. to something that is different, something that can um, allow their children much more freedom and autonomy. And, um, you know, yes, I, I can't stress it enough. Mm. the happiness of the child. So if a child is uh, growing up into in these kind of very uh, cramped conditions, you know, then the outcome of that will be very different. Mm. So if you want to change the world, you have to change how we educate our children. Right. I believe that was a good um, message to all the parents um, to take I action so. to yourself. <laughs> Any last message? Uh, I don't know. Just um, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to um, follow your heart and to follow your child. Okay? 
because children can show us the way. They really can. Thank you so much, Wiling, for being with us today. Again, you can plug her thoughts at Learning Beyond Schooling. They are up on Facebook as well and sharing a lot of ideas all the time. Thank you very much, Wiling. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Have a great day.